How's it going traders? Hopefully you guys enjoy this weekly Forex forecast and make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. All right, starting things off with the US dollar caught report. The past week, the banks added 935 long positions and they also added 343 short positions. And if you want that caught report spreadsheet, lifetime access, a link in the description down below to Patreon. So first things first, on the weekly chart of the US dollar, talking about it for a while, we have a very strong uptrend, so I do expect it to continue to rise. But as you can see here, we reacted off of weekly supply. And that is why I think we are having uh, this little bit of a down move, as you can see on the four hour chart right here and the one hour chart. We actually have a clean one hour downtrend right now on the US dollar. So as far as day trading goes, you can be shorting the US dollar uh, based on that, but it had to be on lower, lower time frames. And as you can see, uh, on the four hour chart here, we have clearly lost momentum. So if we pull up to this four hour supply zone, this is a very significant supply zone. I could definitely see us having at least a small reaction off of that, uh, whether or not we continue to fall down from there. It's kind of hard to predict. I kind of doubt it based on the strong weekly uptrends, but definitely keep an eye out for this four hour area of supply on the US dollar index. I would highly not recommend uh, going in long the US dollar if we are inside of that four hour uh, uh, supply zone. So now that we have a shift of momentum on the four hour chart, where are we pulling back to? Well, if we look at the daily chart here, there's really not much in here we could be pulling back to. This is the nearest area of fresh demand right there. So we could be pulling back to that area or we could react off of this whole general area right here and then continue up with that weekly uptrend. So a little bit of a difficult situation. Overall, I wanna be trading with the overall weekly and daily uptrend on the US dollar. So I'm still more bullish uh, bias on the US dollar index. All right, on to Euro USD forecast. The past week, the banks added 3,019 long positions and they actually got rid of 8,308 short positions. Now, as you can see, we have a weekly downtrend and a daily downtrend, just like the opposite of the US dollar index. But on the four hour chart on the top right screen over here, we have clearly lost this downward momentum and we are now having momentum go to the upside, especially you can see it better on the one hour chart on the bottom right screen. So in my opinion, we have to ask ourselves, where is this headed? Where could we see the Euro turn around? Because at the end of the day, I am short biased the Euro and I wanna be getting in short not long trading against the weekly and daily downtrend. So now that we've had the shift of momentum on the four hour chart, doesn't mean I'm hopping in long. I think day trade longs are semi okay on a one minute chart or a five minute chart maybe. Uh, but overall I wanna be looking at where price is headed. And if you look on the daily chart, uh, we have a very clean supply zone right here in the daily uh, time frame. So we could be pulling back to that area, but what I think is going to happen is we blow through this daily supply zone like that, and we actually pull into this weekly area of supply. So if you look at the daily chart, the daily supply is like right about here. Uh, so I do think we will break the supply, hit weekly supply, and then roll over. That's what I do believe is going to happen here on the Euro USD. So for me personally, I am waiting for that weekly supply to be hit. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'm not interested in trading it. The problem with this daily supply is two things. It's right near weekly supply, which is a higher time frame compared to the daily chart. And another thing is that uh, we are, if this supply zone is hit, it's contacting this trend line as well. And we could see it spike right through that trend line because a lot of, uh, we could see a liquidity hunt around that area. So as far as the Euro goes, I am just waiting for that weekly supply to be hit. And then I will be looking for confirmation, these uh, four hour demand zones being removed. And if you do want my zones for that confirmation during and throughout the week, check out my daily chart analysis on Patreon or YouTube. You can sign up for only $5 cap per month. You can get it on a daily basis. I think it's one of the best things going on YouTube. YouTube as far as trading goes and you can use my zones however you want so check that out we'll be happy to see you guys join the team so as far as the euro goes just waiting for weekly supply to be hit and then I will start to look for confirmation short trades on the four hour chart all right looking at gold forecast the past week the banks got rid of 3787 long positions and they added 10,090 short positions now looking at gold it's just a weird chart right now we are reacting off of this support zone on the weekly chart right here um, and as you can see on the four hour chart, we have lost momentum to the downside and momentum is now going up. This kind of looks like the Euro in my opinion. Um, so as far as gold goes, I'm not seeing a whole lot of trading options. Yes, we are at daily demand right now, but the momentum on the weekly chart is down. So it's just a very, very confusing time. And I am waiting for gold to hit about 1625, 1650, right in that area where I will be acquiring a long position for a long-term swing trade. And until then, I'm just not very interested in getting in long just yet. 
for me to get in long and if we don't go down that much lower i need to start to see this daily chart turn around i need to see higher highs higher lows where we will have a daily uptrend and that would be a signal to me that gold will be going higher i would also prefer to see this supply zone removed especially since we've already reacted it reacted off of it like that so if you're looking for longs that's what i would wait for on gold as far as swing positions go as far as day trading goes if we get a four hour uptrend that's very clean remember i will have the uptrend indicator on my charts for the patreon and youtube members on a daily basis then i would consider getting in long on like a one minute or five minute chart as far as shorts go, I know a lot of people are probably going to want to short gold, which I don't really disagree with because I do think it is going to go lower. The problem is that we have uh, demand zones right here now that could definitely hold up price. And as you can see, we already reacted off of one of them right there. So what I need to see for shorts for day trading goes, I need to see at least both of these uh, demand zones taken out like that. And then if we have a four hour supply zone right here, you could look for a confirmation trade coming off of that supply zone on a 15 minute chart. So as far as gold goes, kind of a confusing time. Uh, I'm personally just waiting and sitting on the sidelines so that I can acquire a position. All right, looking at USD JPY, the past week the banks added 18,147 long contracts and they also added 1,489 short contracts. This is a very interesting chart. This chart intrigues me a lot. And why does it intrigue me? Well, we have a weekly uptrend and we have a daily uptrend. But if you look at the four hour chart, we have clearly lost momentum um, by removing this demand zone. And now we are left with a four hour supply zone. So it's very possible we could see price push back down, or sorry, back up to here and then push down. Uh, as far as longs go, one option is to wait for this four hour supply to be taken out and this high, which will have us continue this four hour uptrend and then longs are definitely higher odds at that situation. But since we have lost momentum on the four hour chart, we have to ask ourselves, where is price going? Well, first, uh, the first clue is we have a weekly uptrend and a daily uptrend. So keep that in mind as I go through this. Now we have to look at the daily chart. Since we've lost momentum on the four hour chart, we have to come to a daily chart to see the nearest daily demand zone. And there is one right here that's a pretty decent daily demand zone. So if price comes down to this daily demand zone, I think it's a fantastic area to look for a one hour confirmation trade to the long side. If you don't know what confirmation is, I know I mentioned a lot, check out the trading tips playlist. Link is in the description down below. I break down exactly what I'm talking about for confirmation. And I also have a private confirmation video series in the tier two YouTube Patreon membership. So definitely check that out as well. So I think price could definitely pull back to this daily demand zone and we could see a reaction off of it. So I'd be waiting for that for a one hour uh, swing trade to the long side. And let's say, we break this uh, daily demand zone like that. Well, where is it headed after that? Well, it's most likely headed to this weekly demand. So it's not really a problem. Let's say you get stopped out at that daily demand zone, the confirmation trade doesn't work, it's not a big deal. Then we could at least get a confirmation trade coming off of this weekly demand zone. So it's really not a big deal, even if we lose out on that daily uh, demand zone, if you look for confirmation. So as far as the USD yen goes, we are losing momentum on the lower time frames, but it's not really a problem because in the higher time frames we have demand uh, that could easily hold up price. So as far as longs goes, I would wait at least for that four hour supply and high to be taken out. Uh, if we continue to push up from here or wait for that daily demand zone to be hit and then we can look for a confirmation long. GBP USD forecast. The past week the banks got rid of 5,700 long positions and they added 15,516 short positions. So looking at this chart, remember we have a weekly and a daily downtrend. So the higher time frames are trending down. That's very, very important. But uh, just like all the other pairs and gold, we have lost momentum on the four hour and the one hour charts. So price is trending up. So if you just look at the screen on my four chart layout, we have downtrends on the left and somewhat uptrend on the one hour chart and momentum loss on the four hour chart. But that does not mean we wanna be getting in long. Longs are semi okay on a one minute chart for day trading only. I cannot stress that enough. So as far as the pound goes, not seeing a whole lot of trades here. We are reacting off of this four hour supply zone right here. We could see a move down from there but I'm not really 100% sure we are gonna move down from there, it's very possible. Uh, so as far as shorts go, which is what I'm looking for, I would need to see this four hour demand zone taken out first before we get in short. So if something like that takes place, we have a four hour supply zone right there, that would be a decent little area to potentially get in short. But let's say we continue to push up from here on the pound, looking at that four hour chart, where are we headed? Well, we have to come to the daily chart and we have a very clean daily supply zone right here. So that would be a decent area to look for a short in on a one hour chart, but we need to see a fast move up into the zone 
right around this point in time. If it takes forever to get there and we you know, hit the supply zone right at that trend line, I will be basically no longer interested in the trade. So I'm only interested in this daily supply zone right here. If we can get a push up in a couple days like this, if we pretend that all of these are candles, I need to see this zone hit very soon if I wanna look for trades in there. So even if you are looking for a short on pound and price continues to push up on the lower time frames, not a big deal. We have a daily supply right here that could easily hold up price. As far as longs go, like I said, I would only be day trading a five minute or a one minute chart long, and I don't even really see any potential setups. I would need to see this one hour supply taken out first before getting in long on a one minute or a five minute chart. Other than that, I'm not really seeing a whole lot. I wouldn't even feel comfortable getting in a long swing position trade until we can get that daily supply removed. But even if we get that daily supply removed, the problem is we have weekly supply right above it, just like this right here. So even if we get that daily supply removed, we have we have weekly supply to get through first. So as far as the pound goes, I don't really recommend getting in long, and I'm just waiting for shorts uh, on the higher time frames. All right, looking at USD CAD forecast. The past week, the banks added 4,750 long positions, and they also got rid of 1,519 short positions. This is also a pretty interesting chart. We have finally broken this weekly supply. I didn't really call it remove last week, but it wicked through twice, so you know I'm basically calling it remove. So remember, we do have a weekly uptrend, although it's very, very choppy, but we do have a weekly uptrend. Very, very important to know in this analysis. And right away, my eye gets uh, directly uh, pointed to this daily area of demand that's we are inside of right now. So on the bottom left screen, we are inside of daily demand. And so the only thing that I can recommend right now, and remember it's not financial advice, it's just based on what I would do. Since we are in daily demand, in a daily uptrend, in a weekly uptrend, we should be potentially looking for one hour confirmation trades to the long side inside of that daily demand. That is the only thing I could suggest on this pair right now. So as far as confirmation goes, the problem is I'm not seeing a whole lot here uh, to go off of. That is the only issue. I guess right here, um, they're not really high quality supply zones right here, but if we can get this area removed, as you can see, I'm drawing out the zone right here. Actually, let me just draw it out with my proper tool. Um, it's not really a great supply zone as far as how I track the zones, um, but if that gets removed, that would be your one hour confirmation. It's pretty aggressive, uh, but like if something like this takes place and we're left with one hour demand, that would be your confirmation entry to the long side on USD CAD. So other than that, I'm really not seeing a whole lot. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens on these, this one hour chart uh, to potentially get a long trade in. Remember, longs are higher odds than shorts in this situation, uh, considering the weekly and the daily uptrend, and especially since we are in daily demand. So as far as USD CAD goes, I would just be on the one hour chart, potentially looking for long trades. All right, on to Aussie US dollar. The past week, the banks added 2,000 longs and they also added 1,100 short positions. Just like a lot of the other pairs like the pound and the euro, we have a weekly downtrend. And actually on this one, we don't really have a daily downtrend, but momentum overall is down. And even on the four hour chart, just like the euro on the pound, we are seeing momentum start to shift to the upside. And we even have basically a one hour uptrend down here. So as far as the Aussie dollar goes, I obviously want to be trading with that weekly downtrend and the daily downward momentum. But the problem is we have lost momentum on the four hour chart. So as far as shorts go swing trading, I basically need to see this four hour demand zone taken out leaving us with four hour supply and then I would feel comfortable shorting because who knows, since we have seen a shift in momentum on the four hour chart, that means we could start to see a bigger shift to the upside. And if that happens, where's price going? The problem is I'm not seeing a whole lot on the Aussie. The only place I see where price could go if we continue to push up like this is this daily supply zone. But the problem is it's tested. So if price comes up to here, I won't even really be that interested in getting in short. Um, so as far as the Aussie dollar goes, I'm just not liking it. As far as trading goes right now, I think that there's a lot of other pairs that are offering uh, better options, especially the USD yen and the Euro is potentially setting up for a nice trade because even on the Euro, we have lost momentum here, but we have a very clean daily supply on the Euro we could get in short, but there's nothing clean here on the Aussie dollar. So as far as the Aussie dollar goes, I would pretty much throw it out the way, throw it out the window. As far as trades go right now, I'm just not seeing a lot of high quality setups and there's nothing wrong at all with admitting that and just basically not looking at a pair this week and putting it on the sidelines until we can get very, very clear and precise analysis that could point us in the right direction that could give us a high probability trading setup. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. As far as the Aussie dollar goes, I basically wouldn't even be looking at it at all. 
All right, USDCHF, the Swiss franc, the past week the banks added 742 long contracts and they got rid of 1,033 short contracts. It's a very confusing chart right now. Remember, we have a weekly uptrend, but it's a very poor quality uptrend based on this price action I am seeing. And if you remember, if you've been following my forecast for the last couple of weeks or for a while now, I talked about how we had a very extremely clear daily downtrend. It was absolutely beautiful downtrend, but I actually also talked about how this price action here was telling me we were about to shoot up and that is exactly what happened but now we are pushing back down to here and we're actually reacting off of my daily supplies and that i've had since last week you can go back and check it out or i think a couple weeks ago i've had this daily demand zone so beautiful reaction off the demand zone already and Although we don't have a daily uptrend, I think it's okay to potentially look for long positions coming off of that daily demand only because we have a weekly uptrend. So I would not be shorting this right now. I, would, I wouldn't even consider shorting until we can get this daily demand removed. And then I think it's somewhat okay, but still not higher odds. So as far as this daily demand goes, you should be looking for potential confirmation longs. And the only supply zone I'm really seeing um, that's decent is this supply zone right here. Now, there is this one hour supply zone right here like this. It's not really a supply zone based on how I look at it, but it is obviously selling. So a more aggressive entry would be if we can get this removed, leaving us with one hour demand, there is your one hour confirmation long. But if we can get this zone removed, even better, and we could potentially look in for longs if that's removed. And there's also an option where let's say price comes up to here, gives us a one hour demand zone, uh, and then we take the trade, we're in the trade, and then price breaks this supply zone, leaving us with demand. You could then bump your stop loss from here up to there and take another long position off of that one hour demand zone. So definitely some potential setups here uh, on the Swiss. Just gonna have to wait to see what happens. But overall, weekly uptrend and daily demand after, and this is a very significant daily demand zone as well, because this is the demand zone that was responsible for moving this very clean downtrend. So I definitely could see us start to rally from this daily demand zone, especially since the trend is up on the weekly chart. All right, finally, we are on crude oil. The past week, the banks got rid of 6,400 longs and they added 8,300 short positions. Now, as far as oil goes, this is one that is on the top of my watch list right now for a few reasons, and I will break that down for you guys right now. So for one reason, we are we do have a very significant pullback on oil, and we are actually, I'm not gonna pull it up because it's kind of a pain to pull it up with this the way my chart's set up, but we are inside of a three month area of demand on oil. So I am looking for longs, especially after getting such a nice pullback. I do not recommend getting in short right now on oil, even on the lower time frames. I think it's a very, very risky uh, potential setup. So for that reason, I'm out as far as uh, uh, short trades go. So as far as long trades go, I'm gonna be spending my time on the daily chart. I know it's not gonna be a lot of time, uh, but I will be looking at the daily chart. And what I want to see, and oh, first of all, I did have this supply zone as being held here. I'm not sure why, but I did miss it. It was removed, and which left us with demand, and now it left us with supply, whatever, whatever. So uh, these are the two new supply zones right here on the daily chart. So what I am looking for is I am looking for this supply to be taken out and this supply to be taken out. Yes, if this supply is taken out, leaving us with demand down here, Technically, that's decent, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I would much rather see, uh, you know, price push up like this, base out here, and then push up, leaving us with demand right there. And I'll be interested in getting in long there. And I'll basically split up my position in, to get in long. So I'm basically waiting for these two daily supply zones to be taken out, and something like this. And then I'll be looking to buy the pullback in daily demand like that. And as we get an uptrend, I'll just lock in profits along the way. And why am I doing that? Because remember, we are in a three month area of demand right now. And that is basically why I'm, why I'm looking to get in long. And not really, much, not really much else to say on oil. I know I'm stuttering my words right now. Uh, but like I said, I, I basically broke it down exactly. We are in three month demand, so I am looking for longs on oil. Hopefully you guys found this weekly Forex forecast helpful. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like and check out the Patreon or YouTube membership if you need help finding your supply and demand zones. It's only $5 CAD per month. Hope to see you guys there and hope to see you in the next video.